Seré rápida, pero... Uh, I'll try to be brief. You know uh, who I am, and we are all. Uh, we all want to make some questions, right? Because we had very interesting presentations. Yesterday we said that we don't want that to us it is important. Yesterday we talked a lot about dietification and it is important to talk about this uh, trend as Cecilia said. We talk a lot about technology, we talk a lot about the internet uh, dangers when we talk about uh, digital education, we talk a lot about dangers. Uh, yesterday we talk a lot about dangers, all day long we talk about dangers and risks. For sure there are risks but all and dangers but there is a lot of potential. This is what we'll do today. Yesterday we talked about the dark side, yeah, and now we will talk about the bright side, how to build and how to reach an amazing and awesome place. And looking for manuals and handbooks to talk with families and to talk with the creative and education community, all the manuals that we uh, found, they were uh, against technology. Technology is very dangerous. Let's forbid the internet to boys and girls. And in the end, we uh, found something that was uh, very radical. I'd say that the authors were kind of outsiders. And I'm going to read some of the main sentences and ideas. We try to look for handbooks and manuals that won't create a fear, prohibition and a control. And we suddenly found these radical people and these are the uh, princes uh, of Sweden and in 2009 they published this uh, manual, Child Online, a uh, family's guide and we made like uh, an abstract in Catalan, it's a very useful manual for those people uh, that work in the education community. And uh, nothing that I'm going to share comes from Exnet. They are the uh, princes of Sweden that uh, talk about it. I'm going to read uh, some words in uh, Catalan for you to have a broad idea, and you'll read it later if you want. The main concept is life is life. Life is life, and there is no online and outside uh, the, the in the digital uh, era. Boys and girls they live simultaneously in two different worlds. For parents, this uh, creates lots of doubts. Ninety-nine percent of adult people use the internet like young people. However, we do have a different notion between online life and offline life. So, the non-digital natives, we have uh, this distortion uh, that uh, kids and children, they do not have. Digital, it's very, very dangerous, and the other, no. So, it's very weird for native digital people. And this is the principle of this guide, right? Online life is like a life out offline. So, our daily uh, in online life of uh, teenagers and children usually consists of normal things, such as going out with friends, watching uh, uh, videos, love, unilateral love, and something more different. Everything that is important in a children's life, it's always online. Parents, uh, they don't have to understand everything. Young culture has been always difficult to understand for foreign people, but it really means everything for those living this culture. The internet allows uh, them to find people, to find uh, similar ideas, to feel that they belong to a community. So this could be the stronger need as human beings. This feeling has become in a sentence or a phrase known as a FOMO, the fear of missing out. And much better, they don't watch less television, sometimes they uh, lose some shows on TV, you know, these kind of uh, shows that, and yellow uh, programs that are very, very dangerous for young people. So, online life, it's like offline life. It could be very, uh, uh, it could be a temptation if something happened, but uh, 
punishing without a cell phone if uh, someone is uh, bad during uh, uh, training a uh, soccer, uh, the solution is not uh, uh, useful. The same can happen with the internet. As many other aspects of life, we must learn how things work. Children, teenagers, they used to be very good uh, for them to develop their own strategies to face what happens offline and online. But they will also need uh, adult support adult support to develop uh, strategies much more efficient to better manage some personal situations. Parents, these models. Well, the question is the next one. It is not if we will allow uh, them to use the internet or not, because after we uh, said, we should be happy for them to ha be in the internet. So we should take into account the time effects on the screen, but also let's take into account what does the internet mean to them. So it's not an issue of time, but maybe what? It's like being in the street. Maybe the problem, it's not the time he is in the street, but also what he does in the street and when. Three main ideas that we should highlight and a piece of recommendation. We need to set rules for all the family members, including parents. We are not demanding something that we won't apply to ourselves, right? Uh, there are many people uh, always hooked to the phones and they never leave their kids to uh, use the phone. So this is kind of a distortion, a cognitive distortion. So we need to set the boundaries and they will understand much better when you are setting a boundary for them to get protected. There are loads of uh, sentences, and this guide is made through different declarations uh, together with teenagers and children. There are many, many, ma they mention, right, uh, many of the opinions that children and teenagers have. So, what else that uh, we could find in uh, this uh, guide? Video games, I uh, do invite you to tomorrow's workshops from uh, 6 to 8 p.m that we'll have here about video games and also the images that never disappear. Our private lives are more uh, digital than ever. So what can we do to you? What can we share? How many people share everything? What do they have for dinner? Mental health issues? So children, they must face this dilemma. What is correct to share in the internet? We cannot control everything that they publish. That's important. But we can be an example to follow. Uh, parents, uh, they want to publish images of their uh, sons and daughters, they love, they feel proud of them, but it's important to be a model to follow. We can apply the basic rule to always ask to our uh, kids before uh, publishing a picture to respect their own integrity but also as a way to start a soft conversation about what kind of images could be published but also about the images in itself and why do we want to publish it. There are also other contents such as this one. Uh, this uh, guide uh, talk about a very difficult cases and tricky ones. Uh, we do invite you to read this. Uh, uh, dangerous cases uh, and uh, we want just to contribute with some ideas and we want to offer a piece of recommendation and it's all and it's called don't feed the troll this concept don't feed the troll it's very important and in general native uh, communities they uh, use it as the first rule it's much better not to answer once you get in a disruptive manner, disruptive manner, looking for provocation, the internet law says don't feed the troll, don't feed the troll. We never answer. And mainly the disruptor answer, well, if we don't offer it, we avoid uh, this disruption. So, in conclusion, children, boys and girls, teenagers, the internet uh, is laid under daily uh, relationships. What happens online will have an impact offline. That's why there is a connection between uh, online vulnerability and offline vulnerability. They are not separated. The one doesn't exclude each other. Bullying, online bullying doesn't exist without the offline uh, bullying in a physical space. However, the internet can be a very strong uh, source 
uh, of support if someone feels alone, lonely or alienated. Online they can get together, they can contact with other similar interests. The internet it's a place to have friends, to feel empowered and to get support. Like in uh, general uh, terms, uh, your children need you. The education uh, that you need as parents also in line has to be present and if you want to download this information you will find it uh, here at uh, the uh, Congress website and we can tweet it if you wish. Thank you so much.